Poor Man Motorsports has actually given me a discount code on all converters on the PoorManMotorsport.com website from now through the end of February. If you use code BLG Torque, you'll get 5% off any converter that he has in stock. That's transmission specialties, uh, TCI, ACC Performance, Cohen. He's got a bunch of them, guys. So make sure you check it out, PoorManMotorsports.com. And in case you guys haven't noticed, pretty much every time I buy a part from Poor Man Motorsports and use it on this channel, he offers some kind of limited time code. So it would behoove you to also subscribe to the channel, try not to miss too many videos, and uh, that's it. So let's get this transmission in. Alright everybody, we are back and so are you. So in the last video, we pulled the transmission and rear end out of the China Vet here. Guys, it has been like, what, 12 days, so almost two weeks since we pulled this out. Uh, we had a little setback trying to get a converter. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it here. We pulled the uh, converter out. Now we could tell that fluid was coming from the bell housing area but the seal looked fine so after setting the converter here for a little while um you notice there's a bunch of transmission fluid laying here so i think what's going on guys i think our stock torque converter was cracked and i've looked over it i don't see the crack but i know a lot of times when the torque converter's cracked you can't really see the crack until you put pressure to it and then it'll start you know spraying fluid out of the crack or whatever so long story short uh, the original plan was to reuse this torque converter, have it tested, have it, uh, uh, have it cleaned out, flushed out and everything, but the price for testing it was just too much. It, it wasn't worth it, uh, especially if they would have found a crack in it and you know, then I would have been out almost $200 just for having it tested and flushed and we still would have had to buy another converter. So I decided to just skip all that drama and order a new converter. We had a company who had originally offered to build us a custom converter for this car. Uh, I'm not going to go into that drama, but basically, long story short, after wasting a week trying to communicate with that company, I ended up just calling my guy Scott at Poor Man Motorsports. He got busy looking for a converter with the specs I wanted, and this is what we landed on. What I wanted, I, I've said it over and over, <laughs> and I'm going to say it one last time. Uh, what I wanted was, I, I basically just wanted a stock converter that was just a little bit beefier um, to hold up to what little abuse this car might see from here on out. Now, these converters are not rated to handle nitrous. They are made primarily for cars with, you know, cams and maybe heads, something like that. This car does not have either of those. It's basically just a bolt-on car with a little shot of spray. So I'm hoping that this guy right here will handle it. Uh, also, I didn't want any stall, guys. I, I basically wanted to keep the stock stall. Well, this guy stalls about four to 500 RPM over stock. So that should put us around eh, somewhere between 2,000, 2,200 stall. I can live with that. And I think the wife can live with it too. So we're gonna check this out real quick. This actually just got here today. And Uncle Ray is on his way over here to help me with the heavy lifting to put you know put the new transmission in we've just been waiting on this converter guys that's all that's been holding us up uh but we got our little quality checklist here for what all that means <laughs> i'm gonna be honest with you guys i've worked in factories uh before my current job i worked in factories my whole life and usually these checklists just get checked and thrown in a box without any actual work being done not saying that's what tci does but uh, I don't put a whole lot of stock in those checklists. <laughs> uh, we got some stickers, so it's already worth what we paid. <laughs> and let's look at the converter itself. There we go. So basically, you know, this is just your standard, you know, level up from stock converter. Uh, you know, it's got, should say on the box. Well, it does somewhere, but it's, you know, furnace brace fins, heat treated sprags. Uh, double heavy duty bearings, um, turbo spline reinforcement. I have no idea what any of this is, guys. <laughs> uh, heat treated steel hub and computer balancing. 
So it's, again, like I said, it's supposed to have about 400 to 500 RPM stall overstock. And this is specifically for 700 R4 transmissions or C5 Corvettes. In case you guys don't know, they both use the same converter. Uh, the C5 Corvette is the only LS powered vehicle that does not use an LS style uh, 4L60 torque converter. Uh, it uses an old school 700 R4 style torque converter. Don't know why GM did that, but they did. Um, part number on this, although, you know, most of you guys are going to want to go with more stall, I know. But just in case you do want to just do a mild little upgrade, uh, here's the part number. 242-700. And uh, this is our converter. Uh, they also put this, they call it HDT coating or HDC. It's supposed to be some kind of heat transfer. It's like a special paint, they say you know helps pull the heat out but I don't know guys I don't know if that works I don't care really and uh, it does come with new bolts and also in this bag it looks like there's a there's an o-ring little o-ring right there and that is most likely right here for the lockup the little o-ring seal that goes on this part for the lockup torque converter uh, now we've got a brand new RPM level 4 transmission that we're putting in here so it already came with a brand new seal so we're not going to use the seal but we will use the new bolts because hell why not right we got new bolts might as well use them we need to get some transmission fluid in this convert this torque converter and I want to you know a lot of the times it takes a while for it to kind of sink in so I want to go ahead and start pouring some in before Ray gets here. So maybe this will be ready when he gets here. Also, for you guys that maybe somehow found this video instead of the first one, um, we actually did a very detailed step-by-step -step video on removing the transmission and rear end from this car for, you know, C5 Corvette. So if you want to look at that video, find the China Vet playlist on this channel and it'll be the video right before this one. Old school converters like for turbo 350s and stuff they seem to suck the transmission fluid in pretty quick um, <laughs> for some reason I've I've never had uh, one of these lockup torque converters that like to take fluid it's like you gotta pour a little bit in you gotta wait you gotta pour a little bit more in but that's why we're going ahead and doing this before Ray gets here see how big a mess I can make you want to oh did he pour it straight in no way Oh, see, there we go. I ended up making a mess after all. While we're waiting on this to chug that down, we'll go ahead and come over here and talk about this. So, what I ended up doing, if you guys remember from the first video, this whole rear end here was just, it was black with grease. And what happens is these, these little side seals here end up leaking. So, I just took it out in the yard, hit it with some super clean, and I didn't even scrub it, guys. I'm not going for show quality here. The only reason I wanted to clean it all is so if these leak in the future, I'll be able to tell what's new and what's old. So we didn't even scrub it. I just, uh, I take some rags and the axle ends there. I hit it with super clean, let it sit for about 10 minutes, hit it with high pressure water hose, and uh, then sprayed some more super clean on it, let it sit about 10 more minutes, hit it again, and this is where we're at. You know, there's still, there's still some grime on there and stuff, but you know, 100 times better than it was. So uh, after I did that, I brought it in and I put the new axle seals in. Yeah, so here's your part number, your GM replacement part right there. You can pause it if you need to write that down. Guys, <laughs> I thought this was going to be kind of like, you know, doing a tail shaft seal on a turbo 350 or 400 or something. I'm just telling you right now, these seals come out and go in so ridiculously easy that I find myself thinking, no wonder they have such a such an issue with leaks on these C5 and C6 Corvettes. I'm going to edge here with a screwdriver. Take your hammer and a little tap. That's all you need to get it started. And then just pry your way around. Way easier than a tail housing seal or a front seal on a uh, transmission. All right, now we're gonna clean all this out. These go in so easy. There's a little rubber lip around there, so you can kind of pop that in there and it'll kind of hold it for you. And just take your hammer and tap around the edges. 
real gently. You don't want to drive any one part of it in uh, a lot further than the other. I actually hit it too hard there. Yep, she started. I'm just going to go around the edge and keep tapping so it goes in even. And that's it. She's in. You can look around the edge. What I like to do is stick my fingernail under there and make sure my fingernail won't go it won't go in if it'll go if your fingernail will slip in behind it anywhere then you need to tap on it there you want it to be completely flush against this flange here but that's it guys that's how you put these seals in so as you can see that was a pretty easy job uh, after that I just came up slid it back onto the the uh, back of the transmission uh, put our nuts here our bolts here there's just four of them guys and, uh, you know, that was pretty uneventful, too. As a matter of fact, I didn't even record myself doing that. It took all of, like, two minutes. So, uh, it's all together. Looks like our converter has taken just about all of it. We're going to pour a little more, more in there. And here in just a few minutes, Uncle Ray should be here. And we're just going to go ahead and start shoving this thing in. Now, I know we did a highly detailed video of the removal. I showed you everything step by step. And for that reason... I'm probably not going to go into as great a detail in this video because let's be honest guys that removal video was like 45 minutes long y'all don't want to sit through that again you know so it's going to be going to be kind of like hey we're going to throw these bolts in and we're going to throw them in so ah looks like Uncle Ray's pulling up all right we got Uncle Ray over here now uh we've got about a cord in the torque converter it's all drained down I think we're good so I guess I'm you want me to put it in? Do you want to put it in? That ought to help balance this thing a little bit. So, there we go. Should go in some more. I think that's it. That's probably it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's rubbing the case. So here's the thing with these guys. Uh, on a normal transmission, your bell housing is going to come out to here, and you can take a measurement to decide if your torque converter is seated fully. Obviously, you can't do that on the C5 because it doesn't have the bell housing here. But what you can do is once you get it in far enough, if you're pushing ever so slightly, uh, you'll feel it rub right here on the bell housing. So you'll know you got it in all the way. So you can kind of hear it rubbing. You'll know you got it in all the way when it does that. Once it's up in there and it's bolted up, uh, it should be even and it should just spin freely it shouldn't rub on anything well yeah because it's going to pull it up a little when we bolt it up so all right guys we're just going to go ahead and crawl under here and start jacking this thing up into place how are we doing What we'll do is once we get it up, I can put a jack back here to yeah. level it. I'm gonna have to go up just a little more. I'm cranking it with my leg, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna crank just a little more. Is it close to the I think end? it's close. I'm gonna try to shove it forward. There it is. It's in. That easy. No, I think there's one, two, three. Four, five, six. The other okay. should be six. The one up at the very top over there yeah. is going to be one like this. Okay. Yeah, just so you guys can see that. The very top one is going to be like this. The two over here on the uh, driver's side are also going to be like this. And then all, oh, <laughs> and then all the rest of them are just uh, you know regular bolts. Cable here which just clips on. Oh, just like that. Yep, so that's clipped back on. Don't pay any attention to our nitrous line up here. 
And then we'll clip our harness in the little harness clip here. That's good to go. How you doing over there, Ray? You having trouble with that one? Yeah, can you kick it over some more? Yeah. Is that helping? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because all these are already started, so we're good on that. Look it up, Ray, hard at it. All right, now, come up here. Remember we had the little speed sensor? See the blue plug? That's gonna plug in up top here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I forget. Got all the bell housing bolts in. Just a word of advice, make sure you don't get any of your brackets caught between the bell housing and the top. We actually got one caught, a wire harness bracket at the very top and pulled it out and then got it caught again and had to take these in and out several times. But we're good now. All the bell housing bolts are tight. Now, we gotta move on to our torque converter bolts. Now, I made the comment, I didn't know what this hole was for in the last video, and I think I figured it out, is to stick a screwdriver in there and shoot the converter forward against the uh, flex plate. Uh, oh, back up a little bit, right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our torque converter bolts in. Uh, we're gonna put some Loctite on those guys. Make sure they don't come loose. Yeah, and just a word of advice when you're doing this, guys. Uh, make sure you get all the torque converter bolts started. Don't put one in and tighten it. Like, get one in about finger tight, and then, you know, use your screwdriver and this little hole back here like we did in the video where we took it out to oh maneuver God. the torque converter around, and then, uh, you know, get them all in, and then go through them and tighten them each up. I got it. I'd like to tighten it up a little bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it won't go all the way in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not, is it? Okay. All right, Ray got all the converter bolts tight. Snap that little plug in there, and then this plug goes in here, but we're going to have to let it down some. The transmission lines are in the way. I think it's pushed over that way, too, so. All right, I've got your condom, man. <laughs> Covers in. Covers in. All right. So, jack it back up. Yes. Oh, no, no, I don't want to jack it back up. Um, actually, watch your fingers. I know you need to jack it back up. Oh, shit, yeah, because it's resting on the tunnel. Because I just tried to let it down, it wouldn't drop anymore. Transmission lines are. Are camped? No. Okay, and that's where it needs to be to hook the transmission lines up. You want me to crawl under there and do that? I know it's a 16 millimeter wrench on those transmission lines. You probably have to jack it up some more. Really? You put them in. Okay, I'll do the transmission lines. So, I've got the transmission lines on. I just need to snug them a little wee bit more. And then we need to plug this guy. It's plugged back in here. Just like that. Snaps right in. And what Ray is doing now is since we have this jack under the cradle mount, Ray's putting the trans jack back under the front of the transmission. To hold the weight so we can take this jack loose and uh, bring our cradle up under here. Drop it low, lower than the flow. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the trans jack's holding it. Okay, so what we're gonna, what we've decided to do while the cradle's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and pull our drain plug and finish draining the. Uh, what's left of the gear oil out of here. And I got some Royal Purple we're gonna replace it with. Uh, I mean, while we're under here, we might as well do it. Plus we leaked a bunch out the side uh, when I was, when we were originally taking it out and when I was cleaning it too. So uh, I'm using the Royal Purple guys. It, it is about twice the cost of regular gear oil. It's uh, and it's the 75, I think 7590 is what it was. That's, it's whatever it was recommended, that's what I got. But 
uh, even though the Royal Purple is a little bit more expensive, it already has the limited slip additive in it. So it works out to about the same price because you don't have to buy the additive, if that makes sense. So like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna pull this, let it drain completely. Then we'll put that plug back in. We'll pull this plug, that plug right there. And what we'll do is we'll fill it up until it just starts to dribble out. That's when it's full. We put our plug back in, done. Easy peasy, nice and simple. What we're doing now is we're just trying to get the rear end. Hold it, hold it. You go down like this. Wait, down? Yeah. We're trying to get the rear end perfectly level so when we fill it up, we get the right amount of uh, fluid in it. We're gonna put the drain plug back in and we're gonna throw some royal purple in the back of it until it won't hold no more. Got this little pump guy. You can get these at the auto parts store for like 10 bucks. It screws onto the big jugs or the small jugs. So we can just pump it in or I mean, do you want to pump it in or do you want to try to do it the other way? Messy. There we go. Oh, look at this. She's purple. She's a purple. All right, rear end's full. I, I, guess, that socket. I guess it's time to uh, put the cradle back up and deal with this one cradle bolt that broke loose and spinning. I want to show you guys something too. So the cradle bolt back here that broke loose, you can actually see how these are mounted if you go to the front of the car. So let me pop the hood. I'm going to show Ray too. So you can kind of see what's going on at the top. You can see what's going on at the top and what broke exactly. So where's it at? Right there. You guys can see that? So this is what the top of one of those cradle bolts looks like. So it's got this little keeper here and it's pop riveted to the frame there. So what's happened is like it's either broke here or the pop rivet has broke or something. But uh, if you could see the top of those, that's what it would look like. Or these little these little things around here have broke and it's just letting the bolt spin within this thing. It's one of those things going on guys, but oh yeah, here's an even better look. You can see it up here, but this is the exact same thing that's in the back on the cradle bolts, only you know you can't see it because the body's sitting right on top of it. Huh, I've lost one of my manual oh there it is. A little headlight motor covers. There it is. I'm not even gonna try to film this, guys. At this point, we're just trying to get this thing together. So, uh, all we're doing, we're gonna get the cradle under here. I'm gonna take my two exhaust pipes. I'm gonna lay them back over the cradle. We're gonna make sure none of the wires are caught in anything, uh, or anything, and then we're just gonna raise it up. You can see it's kind of balancing on the jack a little bit there. But that's what's going on. Uh, when I get to the point where we have to deal with this messed up bolt, uh, I'll record that. Okay, so you guys in the last video were asking me what I was going to do about this one uh, this one stud that had broke loose. So here's what I ended up doing. I got the vice grips on it, and I'm just taking an open end wrench. I was going to use a ratcheting wrench, but it's 13 sixteenths. I don't have one big enough to fit it. So I'm just taking an open end wrench. I'm letting the vice grip well. Oh, you guys are probably going to be a little mad at me, but so here's what happened. The battery went dead on the GoPro here and we were rolling along pretty good, good pace. So I did not want to go in and hunt for my extra battery. So we went ahead and got all this stuff thrown together. Uh, I mean, everything's bolted up guys. It's just like the uh, last video where we took it apart. We just did all the opposite, right? Right. So we got our upper control arms bolted back in, got our shocks bolted in, hooked the emergency brake cables back up, our, uh, Speed sensor, all that's hooked back up. Brakes are back on. Let's see, anything else? Yeah, we clipped all of our harnesses and everything back to our cradle there. 
and everything's bolted up guys so the only thing i have left to do is put the exhaust back on and funny story about that we were rolling at such a good pace that i forgot that i needed to hang the exhaust over the cradle before we raise the cradle up so now the car's not high enough off the ground for me to uh just put this back in so it's not a huge deal i'm just gonna have to take this clamp off both sides and you know put it in a, a piece at a time uh just made a little extra work for myself so i'm gonna get that done uh get the exhaust bolted back on then we have to move on to the fill procedure now i've actually went over this fill procedure with you guys in several videos in the past uh most notably the shift kit video that we did on this car a couple years ago but uh it's pretty simple it's just time consuming because basically what you have to do you have to fill through your drain plug here so what that involves is you take your drain plug out you need to make make sure the car is level not the transmission pan is level but the car is level okay uh, there's a difference because when the car is level the transmission pan is going to be tilted slightly toward the front like it is now uh, car's fairly level right now so you got to get you a pump like one of these pumps i got going on right here i've already started on this actually before i even got the exhaust on so what you do you pump your transmission fluid into the pan until it starts to dribble out well our transmission's brand new uh we actually use compressed air to blow out the cooler line so it's going to take quite a bit the whole system's empty the only fluid that should be in this right now is the quart we put in the converter so we fill the pan up till, till it starts to dribble out then what you want to do is you want to start the car and you want to just kind of run it through the gears with your foot on the brake of course uh, so you know put it in reverse let it sit there a second put it in neutral put it in drive let it sit there a second put it in third second first you know same procedure for all of them just let it sit a second after you uh after you put it in each gear so uh, that'll help circulate the fluid throughout the transmission uh, then after that's done shut the car off and you should be able to put some more in if you're dealing with a full build like or a uh, fresh build like mine because it's gonna you know pump the fluid through the system so at that point put you some more fluid in then here comes the really tedious part uh, you need to screw your drain plug back in and then you need to start the car again and do the same procedure uh, but you need to let the car run at that point uh, until the fluid gets up to temp now you can monitor that with your your dash you know if you toggle through you can find the uh, transmission temperature gauge as you're toggling through all your little stuff up there on the dash but uh, you need to bring it up to temp at least 160 degrees guys because what happens is the fluid it expands a little as it gets warmer and you don't want to overfill this thing so you can't completely fill it cold okay once it's up to temp you want to leave the car running in park pull that plug back out and continue to pump fluid in while the car is running until it just starts to dribble out that hole once it starts to dribble out the hole after again after it's warmed up and while the car is running then at that point it should be full you can screw your plug in torque it down and uh you should be good to go well the exhaust is on i'm gonna have to adjust it a little bit if you guys have a c5 you know it's hard to get these things straight and also keep them straight what i usually like to do is i'll take my jack over there and i'll put a two by four across it and I will raise it up and I will loosen all the clamps up there and let the mufflers fall down till they're right on top of that two by four and that'll kind of hold them level. Then I'll go through and tighten everything up. But I was kind of in a hurry, so I just kind of shoved them up. They're actually not off that bad. This side needs to kind of rotate down just a hair, but anywho, I'm gonna go through the fill procedure that I just told you guys about. Then I'm gonna slap the wheels on and we'll take her for a drive.
I'll tell you what guys, it is piss pouring rain and about 10 o'clock at night. So I'm going to postpone this test drive till uh, I get off work tomorrow. To you guys, it'll be about like one second. Wow. You guys hadn't been in this car in a while, have you? I think the last time we had an in-car view in the China Vet was actually when we won the uh, hard tire event in this thing at uh, English Mountain. So here's the deal, guys. The weather is not cooperating. As you can probably see, the roads are still soaking wet. Uh, it's the next day now. I just got off work, but I have to test drive this thing. Unfortunately, with the wet roads, that means we're not going to be able to do any wide open throttle testing because I already checked my schedule and, well, I don't have time to die today. Uh, it's going to be at least two months before I've got time to uh, to die in a tragic car wreck. So we're just uh, we're going to focus on the important thing here, which is making sure we've got all our gears and uh, uh, hopefully no leaks. And before we even get started, I do want to say before I let this car down, uh, after we had warmed it up and topped all the fluids off and everything, there was a tiny bit of transmission fluid coming from between the bell housing and the transmission. Um, I'm really, really hoping that that was just maybe some excess fluid that was, you know, maybe from where we put the torque converter on, maybe some spilled out and it was just working its way down. Or possibly it was some fluid that was left over in the bell housing on the uh, torque the um, torque shaft side of the bell housing or something because that's going to really suck if we've got a brand new transmission a brand new torque converter and the front seals leaking and we have to pull all this crap back apart so what i did i sprayed it off um i'm going to do this test drive and probably let tracy drive the car for a few days and then we'll jack it back up and uh <laughs> you guys will know if there's a problem because if there's a problem i will definitely let you know in a future video for now, let's get this test drive done. I think this video is long enough. She's definitely cold. All right, we got drive. Let's go. Guys, this is the first time I've driven this car in probably a year or more. <laughs> Tracy's driven it quite a bit, but I've not driven it in well over a year. All right. Here we go. Woo! Second gear. Huh! We got second gear back. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but it flared shifting in the third. 
Okay, we are leaving her outside for the night. So guys, I actually, I cut the uh, test drive footage a little bit short there. And the reason I did is because I was getting myself really worked up. I was not happy with the way the car was shifting. So I came back home and I stewed on it a little bit because I was getting really upset and I started thinking about it and I was like, okay, well, we're only able to do really gentle shifts. Like we're only able to do part throttle testing because of the bad weather. And I started thinking about it and I was like, number one, RPM and just about every reputable transmission manufacturer or transmission builder out there, they recommend that you flash your tune back to stock if you've modified your transmission tune at all. So when we had the old transmission and shift kit in there, uh, I had my shift pressure. I had it, you know, kind of cranked up in the tune. Uh, I also had the shift speed cranked way up in the tune or way down, depending on how you look at it to make it shift faster. Well, before we put the transmission in, I flashed the stock transmission tune back in. So it kind of makes sense that the transmission wouldn't be shifting as fast as my old one did because it's currently on the stock shift speed settings, if that makes sense to you guys. Something else too, is we do have a slightly uh, a converter in here with slightly more stall. Now it's only about 500 RPM over stock is what it's supposed to be, but that would be enough that at part throttle, it might make it seem like it's flaring a little bit on the shift. And that would also, you know, kind of drag the shifts out a little at part throttle. So I think what I'm gonna do, <laughs> just to be fair to RPM, uh, and to not freak out right now. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait till Saturday because it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow too. Uh, Saturday, it's supposed to be nice, bright and sunny. So we're gonna leave the car out here for now, let nature wash it off because it's pretty dusty. And Saturday, I'm gonna take the car back out. Uh, if you guys want me to record that, just let me know in the comments because I, I may or may not record it. Uh, I'm gonna take the car out when I can actually do some wide open throttle pulls in it on dry pavement. And we'll check it out and see how it goes then. And if if everything goes good with that drive, we'll bring it back in here, put it back on jack stands, and I wanna check that leak that I'm worried about uh, at the front there. Uh, we'll see if it has, you know, if it's leaked anymore. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it was just some residual fluid that was in there from maybe, like I said earlier, maybe we spilt it on the torque converter or something. Uh, but we'll do that, and since it'll already be warmed up, we'll go ahead and double check our levels, make sure that the fluid is not, like I don't have too much, too little fluid in it. And uh, hopefully after that, we're good guys. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I got for you. I hope over the last two videos, you guys that were maybe needing help and had been asking me questions about what it takes to put a transmission in one of these or swap the transmission. Uh, I hope these videos have helped you guys out. Uh, if they did, please share them because that helps the channel out. But for now, I'm leaving the car outside because I want to do some cleanup in here, and that way I can move stuff around uh, without having to, you know, worry about bumping into the car and stuff. Uh, Ray and I made some messes here on the floor, so I'm going to leave the car out there. Like I said earlier, let nature wash it off. But guys, if you're looking for a converter, once again, make sure you go to Poor Man Motorsports, check out his inventory, and use the code BLGTORQUE for 5% off any converter he has in stock. Uh, I want to thank Scott at Poor Man Motorsports. He's helped this channel out a lot. Uh, now, he don't give me stuff for free, guys. He's a retailer. He's not a manufacturer. Uh, but he does help me out on pricing a little bit. And when I'm looking for parts that, you know, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for, he helps me find them, kind of like he did with this torque converter. So huge shout out to Scott at Poor Man Motorsports. Check it out, guys. PoorManMotorsport.com. Thanks once again for watching, guys. Now get off YouTube, get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.